Baseball in Hawaii. Baseball fans dream about the possibilities there, like we do with every place that has year-round warm weather. But though some places have nice weather, they also have small populations, low incomes, high crime rates, disinterest in baseball, or a language that most ballplayers don't speak. Hawaii, on the other hand, has millions of people living there, plus millions more with tourists. Incomes are high, crime is low, the main language is English, Japanese is also widely spoken. Baseball is a big sport there. Many Hawaiians have gone on to play in Major League Baseball, including a few now. It's a part of the United States, so it's not hard to open business there. Best of all, it's in the middle of the Pacific, halfway between East Asia and the Americas, the two regions of the world where baseball thrives. Naturally, with all these advantages, the idea of starting a winter league there has already been tried out. And it wasn't too long ago either. It wasn't a total failure. Some leagues fold after one or two seasons. But the Hawaiian League lasted a total of eight years. Wasn't a success either, or else we'd still see it going today. But it was unique, and holds a special place in recent baseball history. It was a league where future stars of MLB, NPB, and KBO played on the same field, on the same teams, before going on to be stars in those three leagues. And I do mean stars. In the short time this league existed, it produced a long list of big league talent, including some of the very best players seen in the last few decades. Today I want to look at the league's short history, the teams that played, the grounds that were used, the players who were there, how it started, how it ended, why it didn't last, and the possibility of it starting up again in the future. The league was started by Dwayne Carissa, who grew up playing baseball in Hawaii. He wanted Hawaii to serve as a place where young professional prospects could train during the Major League offseason, as they do in other winter leagues, but also a place where the different cultures of the baseball world could unite, and for a while it did just that. The Hawaiian League worked with MLB, NPB, and KBO to get some of their best young athletes out there to play together. The first season was played in 1993 with four teams, the Hilo Stars, the Honolulu Sharks, the Kauai Emeralds, and the Maui Stingrays, very suitable names for Hawaiian teams. The Hilo Stars played their home games at Wong Stadium, a 2400 capacity ballpark, part of the Ho'olu Park Complex in Hilo. The Honolulu Sharks played at the 4300 capacity Les Murakami Stadium at the University of Hawaii at Manoa, opened in 1983. The Kauai Emeralds played at the 2200 capacity Hans Lorange Field in Waipahu. And the Maui Stingrays played their home games at 1500 seat Maihara Stadium in Wailuku, open since 1973. A 40-game schedule was played from October to December, about the same number of games played in the Caribbean Winter Leagues, but in the Hawaiian League they were all done by Christmas. The Stars won the inaugural title in 93 with a record of 28-20. and No playoff, the title just went to the team with the best record. The Stars had a few players from NPB's Oryx Blue Wave, including a 19-year-old Ichiro Suzuki. It's been said that he was sent there to change his swing, to hit more like a normal batter. Instead, he just got better at his unorthodox swing, and returned to NPB, where he hit 385 with over 200 hits the following summer. Ichiro batted 311 in Hawaii that year, but the batting title went to Chad Fonville, who batted 336. Fonville played in MLB from 95 to 99. Jason Giambi, who went on to be a five time Major League All Star, batted 343 as a member of the Kauai Emeralds, but did not have enough plate appearances to qualify for the batting title. MVP went to Ernie Young, the league leader in home runs, RBI, and total bases. He started his eight-year Major League career the following summer. In 1994, the bottom two became the top two. The Emeralds were crowned champions with a record of 29-21, and 21, though the Maui Stingrays were right there with them at 30-22. and 22. The Emeralds had rainouts they were unable to make up, so they won the title winning fewer games. The MVP went to Hiroki Kokubo, who led the league in batting, hits, and doubles. He had a long NPB career from 94 to 2012, where he was an 11-time All-Star, 2,000 hits, and 400 home runs. Kokubo's teammate from the Dai Hawks, Hidekaza Watanabe, won the pitcher's triple crown in Hawaii that year. Aaron Boone batted 288 there, a few years before starting his major league career. And two women played there that year. Pitcher Leanne Ketchum and first baseman Julie Croto played for the Stingrays, becoming the first female players in an MLB-sanctioned winter league. In 1995, the league was split into two divisions. The Kauai Emeralds were rebranded as the West Oahu Kane Fires, and they played with the Sharks in the Outrigger division. The Stingrays and the Stars played in the Volcano Division. Both teams in the Outrigger had winning records. The Sharks won it by one game. Both Volcano teams had losing records. Stingrays won it by two games. The Sharks and Stingrays met in a single championship game, won by the Stingrays 4-3 for their first title, despite their losing record. Batting title went to DJ Boston, who later reached AAA but never made it to the Major League level. Derek Gibson led the league in home runs. Years later, he played briefly for the Rockies. 
a player who would go on to have a long career with the Rockies, Todd Helton, was also playing in Hawaii that year. Hawaiian native Benny Agbayani tied for the league lead in RBI. It was one of three seasons Agbayani played for the Honolulu Sharks. He would later play in the World Series for the New York Mets. Kazuo Matsui was there, just after his first season in NPB, and several years before going to MLB. As was Shinjiro Hiyama, already a few years into a more than 20-year career with the Hanshin Tigers. In 1996, the same two teams won their divisions, but in different fashion. The Sharks dominated with a record of 36-16. and 16. The Stingrays were able to squeak out a winning record at 25-24. and 24. And once again, the Stingrays were victorious, 6-4 to four in the championship game, for their second consecutive title. Brad Fulmer of the Sharks was the league leader in batting and RBI, one year before starting his major league career. Gabe Kapler, now the manager of the San Francisco Giants, led the league in home runs. Other players in Hawaii that year who later played in MLB included Chad Hermanson, Jeff Bloom, Josh Booty, and Mark Kotze. Atsunori Inaba was just two years into his NPB career at that time. He retired in 2014 with over 2,000 hits and managed Japan's gold medal winning team at the 2020 Olympics. In 1997, the Sharks were no longer dominant, but still managed to win the Outrigger division with a record of 27 and 27. The Stars overtook the Stingrays to win the Volcano division at 29 and 24. Once again, the team with the best record could not get it done in the championship game. The Sharks beat the Stars for their first league title. Nobuhiko Matsunaka broke the Hawaiian League record for batting with a 372 average. Matsunaka played for the Hawks of NPB from 1997 to 2015, hitting 376 home runs. Catcher Michael Barrett was there that year and batted 314. He made his Major League debut the following summer. Gabe Kapler played his second season there. Other future big leaguers were Terrence Long, Robert Fick, and Calvin Pickering. Unfortunately, the league was too reliant on limited funding from MLB and folded after the 1997 season. The league wasn't forgotten, though, and there were efforts to bring it back. Finally, in 2006, it was revived with four teams. The Sharks and the Cane Fires returned. The Stingrays and Stars did not. In their place were the Waikiki Beach Boys and the North Shore Honu. The Sharks and Beach Boys competed in the East Division, both playing at Les Murakami Stadium. The Honu and Cane Fires were in the West Division, both playing at Hans Lorange Field. The new teams prevailed in the returning season. The Beach Boys won the East Division with a record of 20 and 16. The Honu won the West by a half game over the King Fires at 18 and 17. The championship was won by the Honu. They went on to win it again in 2007. The Beach Boys won it in 2008. Then, when the contract with MLB expired, the league folded again, this time for good. During this time, Kenley Jansen was a member of the Honu when he was a prospect at catcher before going on to record 300 saves as a closer in his ongoing major league career. Ryan Kalish was another future major leaguer playing in North Shore during those years. Lorenzo Cain was there too, though he admits he didn't do so well. A number of future major league stars played for the Beach Boys. MVP and five-time silver slugger Buster Posey. Two-time all-star third baseman Todd Frazier. Yonder Alonso was a Beach Boy before hitting 100 home runs in a 10-year big league career. Lucas Duda was there a couple years before making his debut with the Mets. So why didn't it last? Well, the league couldn't possibly keep going without MLB support. I couldn't find attendance figures. Everything written about the environment at the games describes a sizable, enthusiastic crowd. However, an article written just before the start of the league's final season in 2008 from Hawaii Magazine says that ticket prices are 3 to $6 per game. Bringing in top-level prospects from both sides of the Pacific, having them stay in beachside hotels, then only charging a few dollars for people to see the games, just doesn't sound profitable. So why did MLB pull the plug so quickly? After all, they've got money to burn, and the league could have grown into something huge. Just seems like they gave up on it too easily. Maybe they didn't see any potential for it to be anything more than just a small winter league, where the crowd sizes don't match the quality of players they're putting out on the field. Or maybe it's just another bad decision made by MLB. Any chance of it coming back? I'd say it's not likely. Notice that the league played its final season just two years before the relaunch of the Australian Baseball League. The ABL fills a lot of the needs the Hawaiian League previously did. It gives us warm weather winch ball, high population, high incomes, low crime, with an added bonus of a large number of local ball players to fill the rosters. While there were Hawaiians on the rosters of the Hawaiian teams, there just weren't enough. They had to rely on imported talent. The ABL brings in a lot of prospects. Sometimes one ABL team will have four or five prospects from a single major league organization. It's got a team entirely made up of KBO prospects, and there's talk of having a similar team made up of NPB prospects. So if they were to relaunch the Hawaiian League, it would have to compete with the ABL, and it would be a few years behind. 
If it does happen, the talent level would not be nearly what it was before, and I'm not sure if MLB would be willing to support it since they already got something similar in Australia, but they should have kept it going from the 90s to the present. Seems like a missed opportunity. Not sure what the future holds for baseball in Hawaii now that there's no winter league. It's too far from the mainland to get a major league team to call it home. They've got an amateur league there, but the best they can do as far as talent is an occasional ex-minor league player. In the past, they've talked about holding a World Series in Hawaii between the MLB and NPB champions, but they would need to build a big new stadium just for that once-a-year event. Besides, an MLB versus NPB World Series, no matter where you want to hold it, is unlikely to happen anyway. What do you think can be done for baseball in Hawaii? Let us know down in the comments. That's all for this one, and until next time, this is Baseball International. See ya!